So let's talk muscle contractions. So I've had this question come in from Jade and she's basically got a little bit confused about actin and myosin, which you know what is a really easy thing to get confused about. So when you're breaking down and really looking at what's going on in terms of the muscle structure, you'll notice that the smallest part that we come across, the really, really tiny part, it makes up a sarcomere. Now this whole piece of paper here you can see in front of me is the sarcomere, the green bit and the red bit. Now, this is the smallest part and it's actually where the muscle contraction takes place. So, just to kind of give you a little bit of an orientation, this green line here is the actin. The way I remember this is that actin has got a T in it, therefore it's the thin line. So, actin is the thin line. Then, the thick line across the middle is the myosin. Now, this contractile protein has a really unique sort of set of golf club heads on the end of it. Now the role here is that these two need to talk to each other in order to allow both ends of the muscle to get close together, which is our muscle contraction. So for example, imagine this is one end of your muscle fiber, uh, of your sort of muscle fiber, then we've got a sarcomere length and then we stack up sarcomere upon sarcomere upon sarcomere next to each other. Now imagine this like a concertina, the aim of this is to get one end of the sarcomere closer to the other end of the sarcomere, so they've got to draw together. But in order for that to happen, what it needs to do is these little myosin heads, these little golf club shaped heads, have got ATP on them. And that allows it to connect to the actin. So these literally connect, and then as if you're playing tug of war, they literally pull the actin in closer. So the myosins pull the actin in closer towards each other. And then you get a concertina effect on this sarcomere, and then that happens to the sarcomere to the right of it, to the left of it, and then you end up with a long line of sarcomeres that are all getting shorter. And that's obviously what forms a muscle fibre, and that muscle fibre is getting shorter. That then gives us our concentric muscle contraction. So that's how muscle contraction's really happening from an actin and myosin level. You've also got the tip in there to remember what one is actin, that's the thin one. You know the ATP sits on the golf club heads and that's what allows them to draw this contraction together. Bringing it together is our concentric contraction. That's the moment whereby the muscle length is getting shorter. Whereas when they gradually release, they've got to unwind really gradually, like as if you were doing a tug of war in reverse. Now they've got to now gradually let go of that. They can't just let go instantly. As they gradually let go, that's our eccentric contraction, just as our muscle starts to elongate back out and our muscle fiber gets longer. So there's a nice quick tip all about actin and myosin and understanding the structure of what's going on in our muscle fibers and how that influences muscle contraction in particular. If you have any questions at all, then please do pop them in the comments box below because I love answering your questions and doing these little videos for you. So please do pop them in the comments box below.